Please be seated. Good morning. morning. Welcome to our first Sunday in Lent services. Give thanks and praise to God for our beautiful for this beautiful day. We have got to come together as a congregation and praise, prayer, worship, song, and celebration. Are there any announcements or concerns from the congregation at this time? Pastor. Thank you, brother. Last week, I introduced to you very briefly the DVD. They call it The Chosen One, and this is season one. And we will be glad to provide to anyone uh, who wants one of these copies, uh, just let me know. We've had one taker so far. And uh, please let me know if you would like to have a copy and just uh, we'll make one available to you. Uh, both of the, actually side one and side two, we have actually uh, already seen, Karen and I watched it, and it's, it's well worth it, especially uh, the last five. And uh, I think uh, they capture something that we often try to push, put under the rug. So again, let me know if you are interested in having a copy of The Chosen One. Are there any other announcements? Karen. I'm sorry? Um, this coming Tuesday, right? Yeah, our son Jonathan is going in for a retinal procedure. He's had problems with that for, oh, I would guess almost 25 years. And uh, he needs to have some more procedures performed. And so please keep him in our prayers and his wife and family as well. Any other prayer requests? The um, It's good to see uh, Dick and Betty Vance. Uh, Dick is uh, practicing holding his arm from all the pitching that he did over the years. Uh, actually, it was shooting. But anyway, uh, we want to keep him in our joy and, and uh, happiness for him. Uh, anybody else? The team won last night. What, what, what was the team? <clears throat> I believe it was Buckeye Central, and now they're going to state. Pardon? Oh, Buck and Crawford did too? Wow, I can't miss those. I'll get a letter and email. Okay. Uh, any, uh, any other prayer requests? If not, let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are a gracious God. And we thank you for loving us so much, even when we, we are not very lovable. Thank you, Lord, for the joy that the team can, uh, teams can appreciate, Crawford and Buckeye Central. We ask that you continue to be with them and help them to know that you are there with them and love them. Lord, we sometimes forget that we are here on this earth because of the joy that you have in uh, seeing us be with, you, be with you in a way that only you can be. Thank you, Lord, for all your goodness, and uh, thank you, Lord, for all the ways in which you love us. In your name, amen. Let's continue with the brief order of confession, and that's on 56, page 56. Please rise. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. <clears throat> if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I almost forgot the, I did forget the apostolic greeting. And uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Yeah. Not okay, never mind. Sorry. I always forget. I'm rubbing off on you. <laughs> Prayer of the day. Pardon? Prayer of the day. Prayer of the day. Would you go ahead and read it? Yeah, okay. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's continue with the prayer of the day as printed in the bulletin. O oh Lord God, you would have us put no trust in anything we do. Mercifully grant that by your power we may be defended against all diversity. For your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
sleeping thy presence my life be thou my wisdom and thou my true word I ever with thee and thou with me Lord thou my great father and I thy true Thou in me dwelling, and I with thee one. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance, now and always. Thou and thou only, first in my heart. of heaven my treasure thou art high king of heaven my victory won may i reach heaven's joys o bright heaven's sun heart of my own heart whatever be Still be my vision, O ruler of all. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall. Still be my vision, O ruler. Our first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 1 through 11. Moses said to the Israelites, When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance and have taken possession of it and live in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket, and you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name to dwell there. And you shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall make response before the Lord your God. A wandering Armenian was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number, and there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and humiliated us and laid on us hard labor. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground, which you, O Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all the good that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house, you and the Levite and the sojourner who is among you. Here ends the first reading. We will now read responsibly Psalm 91, verses 1 through 13. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, Lord, I refuge my stronghold, my God, in whom I put my trust. He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his wings, and you shall find refuge under his wings. His faithfulness shall be a shield of the Lord. You shall not be afraid of 
any terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, and the Most High your habitation. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Our second reading comes from Romans chapter 10, verses 8 to 13. The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Here ends the second reading. The Gospel for the first Sunday in Lent is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, To you I will give all the authority and glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will be all be yours. And Jesus answered him, and it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle in the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Here ends the gospel for today. We will now continue with the sermon hymn in the blue, blue hymnal, hymn 660.
Please be seated. The gospel lesson for this day, as we just read a few moments ago, is taken from the fourth chapter of Luke, beginning with the first verse. And we will be focusing on the first nine verses in order to see how we can um, shape our lives pursuant to the scripture. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it is never easy for us to admit that we need you. And sometimes we command you to do what we want, when in reality, we should be on our knees asking you to help us to be the kind of people that you want us to be. And so today, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our God and our Redeemer. Amen. I have never admitted very often the fact that I'm a thief. And you might be wondering why I come to that conclusion. It's because when I was about four or five years old, my mother had a purse, the way people have purses now, a handbag, and, and there was some money sticking out. And a 10 marks, now that was a lot of money in Germany after the, shortly after the war. But I was tempted. I thought to myself, boy, I can get a lot of things with the money. And it's just sticking there. And so I walked by and uh, swiftly stuck the money in my pocket. My mother probably knew that I had been doing it. And so she came up to me and she said, now, did you want to do, say anything about what happen what's happening? And I said, no, no, I'm OK. And I'm sure I didn't say I'm okay, but translated, that's what I said. And then I decided that I better straighten up my life. And so we went to the worship service the next Sunday, and I was there and, and worshiping with the rest of the congregation. And imagine this, in Germany, the, you don't have collection plates this is the way we do over here. You have a stick with a bag on the end, and the usher just pushes us down the aisle. People put in their money, and then they go on. Well, I was feeling guilty and guilty and guilty that I had stolen the money from my mother. And so I decided to take the 10 marks and put it in the collection plate because that way I was free of any sinfulness. The problem was that uh, I had a $10 bill and when it, the bag, the, hang, you know, the hanging collection bag, it took the money quite easily. And that upset my mother, and so she went after the money to make sure that uh, she could get the money back because she was willing to give five marks, but she wasn't willing to give more than that based upon my thievery. Since then, I'm sure I have been a perfect child, just if my parents were alive, they would confirm that, but uh, uh, I can spare you the uh, effort. Uh, I'm far from perfect. And, uh, but that lesson that I learned on that day was that we can all be tempted. It doesn't make any difference how old you are doesn't make any difference how strong you are. All of us can be tempted by the devil and by our own activities and desires. And that's the first thing that we need to learn from this text in the fourth chapter. You see, Jesus is telling the disciples and some other people who were there that he himself was tempted. That he himself was tempted by the devil. And we find in Scripture, we find at least three or four different places, and more than that actually, but three or four different places where Jesus 
tells the disciples that they indeed have sinned, that they have given in to temptation. And if you think you can avoid it in your life, I believe you have a lot of lessons to learn, and I have to learn those lessons too. There was a, I probably mentioned the sundown stairs. We lived in a two, three apartments, and uh, the son downstairs by the name of Reinhardt um, was a perfect child. And uh, he let, his mother let everybody know. She, I think I mentioned this one time, she took my hand and his hand and she compared them and she said, you see, Hans, she said, you have the hands of a mason and my son has the hands of a pianist. And uh, so I thought, I don't want to play the piano anyway. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I wasn't all that upset. But here in this text, we find that Jesus is pulling out of, the t of his life several important le lessons. It starts off, if you, the devil comes to him, and it says, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. What is happening? Satan is beginning to all work at the disciples and at Jesus, trying to get Jesus to commit himself to a way of life that can only be called sinful. But Jesus doesn't stop that. He, you know, Jesus points out that it's very tempting to have bread and all these good things. I mean, after all, Jesus had been going around for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness and had not eaten anything. Can't we give him a break? Can't he use some of his powers to actually manipulate Satan and come back and say, look, I have a lot of things that I can give you, a lot of bread that we can provide for you. Sometimes you and I fall into the same trap. We want what we want when we want it. And we get upset when we don't get it. And so I want to suggest to you that the first thing that we find here is that if you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And then the devil took him up and he showed him the whole world <coughs> Excuse me, in a moment and said to him, to you I will give all the authority in glory. L see what's happening? Jesus is being told by the Satan, I can fix this. I can fix your need. I can do the things that I can, I can so easily accomplish and I can you know, allow those things to uh, sweeten your life and become better. But Jesus doesn't buy it. Jesus doesn't buy it, and you and I shouldn't buy it either. We should not buy the whole notion that Satan or anyone else can satisfy our lives. Because only Jesus can do that. Then the devil goes on and takes him up to a mountain and shows him all the world. And basically, the devil is saying, if you come with me and do what I want, I can give you the authority over all of the things in the world. Have you ever thought, have you ever thought that that could actually happen? Do you think that there are people in our congregation who have, in so many words, sold their lives and hearts and minds to the devil, not the kind of devil that comes with a tail and not the kind of devil that you and I see in picture books and movies, but the kind of devil that sneaks into our lives and tells us that he can do something that we desperately want, but of course we will never get. And then there's a third one, and the third one is, we, see we have provision, God, Christ said, the devil says he, he has provisions for Christ. The devil said that he has the power that he's willing to share. Wouldn't it be nice sometime to have the kind of power that is magical? Many of us, many of us, have you ever had a dream that you were floating in the air? 
Come and see me. I'll tell you what the dream means. But you know, he doesn't stop there again. And this time, the third statement is, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning, concerning you. Provision. The next one we have the, uh, the power, the authority. And finally, he has the prom gives the promise that he will protect him. And we could go on and talk about pleasure and those things, but Jesus doesn't talk about those in this particular text. But what I do want to suggest to you and to me, we have the, the absolute joy of knowing that we can glorify God, and yet we don't want to do it. We look at our church attendance and we say, gee, that's a lot of stuff that we have to do. I'd rather do X, Y, and Z. But Satan is constantly tempting us. John Piper, who is a preacher in Minnesota, puts it this way. He said, God is most glorified when you and I are most satisfied in him. Let me say it again. God is most glorified when you and I are most satisfied in him. What is he saying? He's saying that you and I can so easily be tempted to satisfy our lives with anything else but Jesus. We can so easily say, if I only had one, if I only had, everything would be fine. But you see, it doesn't happen that way. Sin is the, the, uh, the presence of God's absence and that we celebrate Satan's life and control of our lives. We may not want to do it, but we, you and I have the opportunity to satisfy ourselves not by going to a baseball or basketball game. That can be fun. That can be good. But you will never have the satisfaction if that's the only thing. And you will never glorify. We will never glorify if that's the only way that we can be satisfied. And that goes on and on. We can talk about clothing. We can talk about cars. We can talk about all different things. Not that any of them are incorrect or wrong, but that none of them is going to actually satisfy and glorify God. Amen. <clears throat> Pay, turn to page 64. After we sing... Now let us use, recite the Nicene Creed on 64 as an expression of our faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ.
He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Heavenly Father, strengthen us through the power of your Holy Spirit that we might be faithful to your word at all times. As we daily face temptations to turn away from you and your will, redirect our lives that we might show ourselves to be faithful followers of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty Lord, in this season of repentance and renewal, remind us of your never-failing grace. Keep your word near to us. May it ever be on our lips and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Sovereign God, in you we find our fortress and our sanctuary. Guide world leaders to rule with justice and equity. In the face of all trials, danger, and oppression, help us to find our sanctuary in you and your covenantal promise of life eternal. Lord, in your mercy, compassionate God, you pour out your mercy and love with unrestrained generosity. Teach us to give thanks to you in all circumstances. Bring healing mercy to those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. We uplift you and name in our hearts all those you bless with your healing presence. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer you joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Thank you, your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places and in all places offer thanks and praise to you. O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, you bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. Renew our zeal in faith and life and bring us to the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Amen. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <coughs> in the same manner, after they had supped, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. As Lutherans, we believe that Christ is truly present. And if you share in that belief and have been baptized, come, the Lord's table is ready here in Sulphur. to myself, but he's celebrating a birthday and his name is Jim Crable. So let's, let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear John M. Happy birthday to you. Now let us conclude. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you through his grace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, 
you gave your son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. That's our future. <laughs> Let us continue with the closing hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Blessing. Blessing. Benediction. 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 Um, see, I do whatever people tell me, especially the organist. But in any case, um, the, uh, we need to have a benediction. You know what benediction means? Bene means good. Diction says, saying. So it says something good for us. That's a benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord.